welcome to the eight core stronger together get together and I'm, it's really lovely to see familiar faces and it's really lovely to welcome new faces as well welcome we've been going for over a year now incredible and we are going from strength to strength so it's really good to see you thank you for joining us for those of you who don't know me, I'm Julia Blake and I run Blake Consultants and I help businesses grow by getting the right processes and systems in place. And I've also discovered that I rather like connecting people and helping people. And um, we set up Stronger Together over a year ago to help businesses survive in these trying times. And we're going to continue, OK, because there's turbulent times ahead, probably. So we're all here to support each other and it's all about collaboration and sharing. So if we were in a room together, we would, of course, be saying hello to each other and maybe giving each other a business card or something so do put contact details um, into the chat so that people can connect uh, with you um, and also do join the Stronger Together LinkedIn group as well so there's some chat that always happens after these meetings in that so that would be great it's um, always good to, to, to try and build those those relationships and obviously that's a little bit more difficult on Zoom than it is when you're in the room with each other so um, do feel free to do that that would be, be brilliant so we're going to Today is slightly different. Um, we did a poll recently. Thank you to everybody who um, answered uh, the questions. And what came out of that was a uh, desire to have a little bit more time to actually network, to get to know each other. So uh, we've taken that on board and the meeting today will go on to 12.15 and there will be time at the end. We're gonna have some breakout rooms. There'll be time to, to chat with each other, etc. So um, we're going to have our guest speaker, first of all, Tracy Miller, um, um, and she'll be talking for about 40 minutes. Then we're going to have 10 minutes of Q&A. And I believe she's got a couple of exercises there that she's going to get us to do. Um, and then we'll have a breakout uh, session. Then we'll all come back in the room, have a little bit of a chat. And then uh, you can always hang around after 12.15 if you want to. Doors will close at 12.30. And I feel a bit like an air hostess going, the exits are here, here and here. <laughs> so, um, right. Well, here we are. What a weird but interesting year it's been and haven't we all found out lots about ourselves and lots about others and goodness some people have really shone and that fascinates me it fascinates me to see how people have behaved and reacted and and how people are moving forward with this and I thought I'd reach out to Tracy to find out a little bit more about how she's found things because I've known Tracy for almost a decade now, which is incredible. And she's somebody that I completely respect. Her, her views, her take on life are just phenomenal. So Tracy herself runs Bigger, Brighter, Boulder, and her clients are members of Bigger, Brighter, Boulder, and there's over 85 of them. So they're all business owners. So over the last year, she has completely shone. She has helped, her and her team have helped over 85 business owners still be here, keep going she also talks to dozens of other business owners so she's really got her finger on the pulse so that I can't think of anybody better to share how she perceives the people that are doing well what they're doing so Tracy's going to share the strategies that she sees are working in the current environment and the traits that perhaps we need to emulate to be more successful ourselves and by identifying those it gives us the opportunity to emulate them to take them on board to reflect on our own businesses and our own the way we do things our own personality traits so welcome Tracy I'm absolutely delighted that you're here thank you for joining us and I'm going to hand over to you now okay then that is um possibly the nicest introduction i've ever had in the history of ever um so thank you very much for that so um yeah i mean right back at you julia i'm absolutely delighted to be here today to um to present to you guys i've watched julia's journey with um obviously in her business but also with what she's done with stronger together over the last um 12 months and it's phenomenal to see just you know that what julia's put into it you know you probably don't see half the stuff that goes on to actually create these um events for you guys um but also just the community you know um everyone really contributing and being part of um this community which is um absolutely going to be the future of entrepreneurism so um so yeah delighted to be here to um to to talk to you today so what i'm going to share with you our five real world strategies that are actually working in the club that I run for business owners. Um, I'm going to be sharing some practical stuff. So my, my plan um, talking to Julia was to really give you something you can go away, 
and implement straight after this session. So I urge you to take notes. Um, I do speak fast. Um, I have been told to try and slow it down, so I will try. Um, but as I get excited, I shall get faster and faster. So please do take notes. Um, and I'm absolutely happy to take uh, questions at the end and also speak to anybody afterwards if you've got um, something that you don't want to raise publicly, but you want to speak to me privately about. Um, I'm also going to be sharing the eight traits. So these are eight specific traits that... Um, we see consistently business owners showing up with um, to create momentum. So it's not about just having a you know flash in the pan moment as a business owner. We need to make sure that we um, keep the energy up, keep the momentum up um, over the long term. So these are the eight traits that you need to be cultivating. So just a little bit of background. So Julia's done a really good job of introducing me. Um, I am a um, professional coach, facilitator. I'm managing director of BBB Success Groups. We launched the club in 2012. Um, and as Julia said, 85 members. But I've worked with small businesses now for over 10 years. I have helped hundreds of small businesses to uh, generate more income, to create the lifestyle they want, to fundamentally build the business that they want to build. I specialize in service-based businesses. Um, they have unique challenges in taking something that's intangible um, to market, very different to a product business. Um, Obviously, when we talked about it actually at the beginning, we can't do anything without talking about the crazy 12 months that we've had. I mean, it's bonkers. Let's just get that out of the way. I mean, it's it's nuts. You know, we I've never used the word unprecedented um, more than I have in the last um, 12 months. It's just crazy times. But what we've done is really help business owners to navigate through um, that landscape, navigate the turmoil, navigate all the stuff that is coming up for them and help them to not only survive that period, to, but to really thrive. Um, we've just done a series of board meetings. So every quarter our members come together and they present a review of where they are as a business. Um, it's a very important part of their journey with us. It's, it's an evolution opportunity um, and an opportunity for them to really review. And hands down, those board meetings blew us away. And given what these guys have been through, they are no different to you, but given what they've been through over the last 12 months, they honestly blew us away with their self-reflection, what they've achieved and, um, and their positivity about the future, despite the uncertainty, which is really important. I'm sharing this with you not to sell BBB success groups, although I do think it's possibly the greatest place on earth to be as a, um, as a, an ambitious service-based business, but it's to, um, to really engage you in what I'm telling you today. This stuff is not based on theory. This is not from a book. This is um, as a request from Julia to look at what is happening in the club that is causing these guys to be successful. So I've done some work to distill that information into what I'm gonna um, present to you today. I do encourage you to uh, participate with me today. Um, there's um, certainly some partic uh, participation bits, so do get involved. Um, obviously, the more you pay attention, the more you participate, the more you're gonna get out of it. Um, and yeah, like I said, happy to take um, questions and, and things at the end. Okay, so um, before I get into the five, the five things, I want to talk about kind of an overarching thing. I was trying to think of a better word than thing, but thing it is. So an overarching thing that I kind of want you to get your head around, and that is really environment. So there are three core environments that fundamentally impact your ability to be successful in your business. There's the inside environment. There's the outside environment and there's the external environment. Now, the, let's start with the external environment. So the external environment is the big picture, right? So that's the economy. That's the political landscape that we're in right now. The social stuff that's happening, technological, right? That is your external um, landscape. Interesting, right? So we can't ignore the crazy that is going on out there at the moment, right? It's absolutely nuts. But that is your external environment. The outside environment is what I'm defining as your kind of immediate outside. So, you know, where you live, um, your financial situation, your friends, your family, um, that's your kind of outside. And then we've got your inside or internal, um, which is mindset and attitude. Now, I know you've heard this before and I know there are a lot of co coaches in the room, but I am telling you now the inside bit is the bit that you want to focus on, right? That is 80 to 90% of your success is dependent on the inside bit. Even with the nonsense that is going on around us right now, which is impacting obviously the external, but also our kind of outside world, even with that nonsense that's happening right now, how we react to that, how we how we allow that to impact us 
is all to do with what you've got going on internally. So, um, and yet it's the, it's the bit that gets so overlooked. The, the primary difference between inside BBB and outside BBB at the moment is that, is these guys are continuously turning up to, to look and focus on their mindset. They cannot change what is happening right now in our political environment or in our economic environment, environment, but they can absolutely influence, and I'll talk about that in a second, how they react to that. That is absolutely key. So I want you to have that premise as the overarching um, kind of theme, if you like, for um, what I'm going to talk about today. So let's crack on. Let's start with number one. So number one, success starts with self-esteem. This is a mantra that we have across the whole of BBB success groups, and it's absolutely imperative. Your the degree by which you can be successful, this is your success, is absolutely going to be dictated by your levels of self-esteem. Now, self-esteem is a really tricky subject because lots of people don't want to admit they have any kind of self-esteem issues on any day of the week. I've worked with business owners for 10 years now. And as a business owner myself that may appear very confident right now to you, to you, trust me, I have self-esteem shit going on. I have days where I literally don't know what I'm doing. Um, I come from a place of having really low self-esteem. So I understand self-esteem and the challenges. We are in a situation right now where with the turmoil that's happening and the uncertainty and the crazy, business owners are getting squeezed. And what happens when you squeeze people is all their shit comes to the surface, which on the one hand is incredibly challenging, but on the other hand is an amazing opportunity for you to deal with the stuff that is actually getting in the way of you achieving the fundamental things that you want to achieve in life. So if we tackle this stuff in the right way, it, it, it gives us so much opportunity for us to um, get those things out the way so that we can actually move forward in the way that we want to move forward. Now, I want you to remember this line, 95 to 99% of everything that you think, feel and do is unconscious. 95 to 99% of everything that you think, feel and do is unconscious. That's absolutely critical that we understand that, right? We think we are running this show. We're not running this show. The subconscious is running the show, right? You are kind of participating, um, but the subconscious is running the show. And it is really important that you understand that. What you think creates your emotions, which dictates, dictates your behavior, which gives you your result. So what we think creates the emotions, dictates the behavior, which gives us the result. So what we think about is fundamentally important. It actually goes way further than that. So if we get into quantum physics and the world of everything is vibrational energy and you are more powerful than you can possibly imagine and you can influence your whole world, we can get into all of that stuff. But for the purposes of today, let's just stick with the subconscious. So what you think creates your emotions, which creates your behavior, which dictates your results. Um, the subconscious is one million more times powerful than your conscious brain, and it is 40 times quicker. So when you're trying to battle with your subconscious to get it on board, it is like you fighting with 40 million other versions of you that have a different idea of what you should be achieving. So it's challenging to control the subconscious. It's impossible. But what you can do is influence the subconscious. We're going to talk about that in a second. The subconscious is is kind of like a little five-year-old, right? It's not that smart. It's a machine, but it's not that intelligent, right? You're the intelligent bit. What the subconscious does is work on a very binary program, which for the purposes of this is what's safe is known, what's unsafe is unknown, right? That's how the subconscious works. So it works on repetition. It works on stuff that you've been doing for a really long time. It looks at that stuff. It says, right, okay, we've been doing that a really long time. We're still alive. Therefore, it must be okay. Therefore, we're going to keep doing it. This is why change is so hard, right? So if you're not getting a particular result in your business, there's something that you are going to need to change from a mindset and attitude perspective. Trying to create that change is like fighting 40 million um, versions of you that doesn't want to create that change because what's safe is known. This is why change is so hard. The way to create change is we need to create repetitive patterns regardless of how the subconscious is behaving. It is hard and we have to keep coming back to it. Now, I'm going to give you a little exercise, which I do want you to participate in. So I'd like you to hold your hand out in front of you, please. And on your hand, I would like you to imagine a little kind of pixie type 
um, being just about, you know, three, four inches tall, little kind of pixie type being, very cute. And I want you to imagine that pixie type being, um, I want you to imagine what color it is. And I want you to imagine what it's wearing. And I want you to give it a name. And remember that name, make a note of that name. Now, this little pixie type creature represents your subconscious, okay? This little creature cannot see the outside world. Right now, this little creature is just looking at you lovingly and ador adoringly, right? That's all this little creature does all day long is look at you lovingly and adoringly. It cannot see the outside world. All it does every day is watch you, is watch you and how you react. It watches for patterns and it keeps repeating those patterns. It's never tried to do you any harm. All it's ever tried to do is to keep you safe. That's what its job is. It doesn't understand the difference between happy and sad. It doesn't understand the difference between joy and fear. Its sole purpose is to keep you safe. That's what it does. OK, so when you think about that, it has a mental age of about a five year old. Right. So next time you do stupid shit, it's not you because you are a perfectly intelligent adult human being. It's your little tiny five year old subconscious. OK, so what you can do is you're going to take your little subconscious, you're going to pop it on your shoulder. And as you move forward over the next few months, whenever stuff starts to get into the way, in the way, I want you to stop kicking the little cute little pixie, right? What I want you to do is I want you to start educating the pixie, okay? You are the adult in this relationship. The little pixie sitting on your shoulder is the five-year-old in this, in this relationship. You do not kick the five-year-old um, every time something goes wrong. What we do is we educate the five-year-old. So when we're trying to change something at a deep level, let's say we're looking at, I don't know, procrastination, one of my favorite subjects. When we're trying to change something, what we're going to get into is a battle with our little um, subconscious. So the next time we set, uh, you know, a day where we say, right, we're going to do all this stuff and we get to the end of the day and we haven't done all this stuff because I don't know, there was something really good on TV. What we don't do is kick the shit out of our little pixie. What we do do is we educate our little pixie to say, right, okay, this is not how we're doing this moving forward. And then we get back on it and we, we crack on. So the subconscious, your little pixie will respond eventually when you start um, repeating. So it's all about repetition. Once you repeat something for long enough, the subconscious will embrace it and that will become your new habit. So that's how we're gonna create change. Now, um, I've got another short exercise for you, which I just want you to make a note of um, and uh, do it afterwards. And it's called the I like myself exercise. This is my absolute go-to exercise um, for raising self-esteem needs to be done long term. This is not something you do for a couple of days and hope for the best. This is something you do on a regular basis for a good few months. But I tell you now, it will absolutely transform your levels of self-esteem. So you get to the end of each day and you this needs all needs to be written down by hand. Um, you get to the end of the day and you um, ask yourself, OK, what was the highlight from my day? And you will choose your highlight. Um, we're not looking for the greatest moment of all time. It's just the highlight of your day. So you're just picking one thing. The second thing you're going to say is, why was that the highlight? So what made that particular moment from the day stand out over um, any other part of the day? The third thing you're going to do is you're going to answer the question, which is, what was my part in that? So what was my part in making that highlight? And the fourth thing you're going to do is write the whole sentence, I like myself because something related to that. Now, let me give you an example. So let's say um, the highlight of my day was presenting to you guys. So I've got to the end of the day, the highlight of my day was presenting to you. So I've written down uh, presenting at Stronger Together. Um, why was that the highlight? Because, um, you know, I absolutely love connecting with people. Um, I like presenting. I like uh, the topic. I just really enjoyed um, that, that uh, opportunity. So that's my why. What was my part in it? Okay, so my part in it was um, building an amazing relationship with Julia Blake so that she felt that she could invite me along to, um, to this uh, event. Um, so I've written all that down. And then my last line is, I like myself because I build amazing relationships. Now, the rule is, it must be about you. That last line must be about you. It can't be, I like myself because my kids are great. It must be about you. And it must be in the present tense. So it can't be, I like myself because I built... Oh, off then. I like myself because I built um, 
uh, a relationship. It's I like myself because I build um, strong relationships. Do that exercise, such a simple exercise. Do that every day for a month and just watch how your levels of self-esteem um, transform and change. Um, it's one of my absolute go-to exercises. Now, we're just finishing um, our uh, self-esteem, 28-day self-esteem reboot challenge book. Um, we're just about to finish that. Julie, if you wouldn't mind popping my email address into the chat, if you would like a copy, free copy of that book, if you email me your um, name and uh, address, home address, we'll pop a free copy in the post. That should be done by the end of um, this month. So if you would like a copy of that book, please send me your um, home address and we'll pop a copy of that book into the post um, for you. It's an awesome, awesome book. Okay, so that's self-esteem. The biggest killer of self-esteem is you beating yourself up for the behavior that's caused by lack of self-esteem. So we need to just knock that on the head, okay? Absolutely knock that on the head. What we need to do is really work on building self-esteem. So that's number one, okay. Good so far? Good, okay. Right, number two. Number two is you must get a powerful agenda. You absolutely must. In case you hadn't noticed, there are multiple people out there right now with agendas all trying to pull you on their bloody agenda. You absolutely must have, as a business business owner, a very clear agenda. The person with the strongest agenda wins every time. And this is globally, this is locally, and this is you in your own head, right? If your subconscious has a stronger agenda than you, it's going to win every time, right? If you're in a sales environment and that client has a stronger agenda than you, they are going to win every time. So the person with the strongest agenda, um, wins um we're coming back to the subconscious here right so think what you think dictates your emotions which dictates your behavior which gives you the result right so if we can get really strong agendas in place um then we are much more likely to um influence our subconscious to give us the behavior we need in order to be successful um big brand marketing and the media know this Right. They know that the most powerful agenda wins, which is why they perpetually bombard you with stuff to get you there on their agenda, to get you to think a certain way, to get you to feel a certain way so that you take the action that they require you to take. So you need to you're not a passive bystander in your life. Right. Just watching all this happen to uh, happening to you. You are actively participating in this. So we need to be much more deliberate about our um, participation and agenda is where it's at. Okay, so a few steps for you to get a really strong agenda. So number one, get reconnected or connected if you weren't connected in the first place with your purpose. Um, I see business owners stuck a lot at the moment when they can't see past the next bill. So I know it's been a challenging time, but if you can't see past the next bill, you're absolutely kind of stuck in this place. And I see it time and time again. If we can get reconnected with why we're even here, why we're even doing this, we can step over emotionally, um, you know, where, where the next paycheck's coming from. Um, it's really important. Um, if I talk about, if I, if I'll give you a little insight into what my purpose is, um, and it changes, but this is my purpose at the moment. So I believe, I believe, um, the time of the big corporation is over. Um, you know, these organizations are raping and pillaging our, our planet and the people that work for them. I think it's over. I think entrepreneurism is the future. I think we need an entrepreneurial bloody revolution. And I think we need more business owners who are creating amazing environments for their staff, who are giving back to um, the communities. Um, I think more of those guys need to be successful. Now, I can't on my own make that happen across the globe. But I, my role in that is what I'm doing with BBB. It's what I'm doing here today. It's, it's helping business owners to, to be successful because I think you guys are the future. Now, if you think about, if I was turning up to this presentation worrying about, okay, is there anyone here who's going to buy my, somebody needs to buy because I've got a bill to pay, compared to I am here for the entrepreneurial revolution. Can you see the difference in energy? Can you see the difference in how I'm going to show up to this and how I'm going to present this um, this uh, this uh, presentation? It's really important that we get back and connected to our um, our purpose. Now, your purpose can either be direct or indirect. So the entrepreneurial revolution for me, that's a very direct purpose, right? So I found a role within that that helps me to achieve my part in that purpose. I also have another um, kind of, 
uh, well, let me give you a, a hint on how to find your purpose. Think about the stuff that's pissing you off, right? So think about the stuff that upsets you. Think about the stuff that's pissing you off, that makes you angry. Think about that. Think about what you see out there that you just despair of. Think about, think about that. And how then can you align what you're doing with that? Now, for me, it's watching the shit storm that's happening to entrepreneurs right now and the challenges they're facing just to be able to run a business and achieve the lifestyle that they want. That pisses me off. What also pisses me off, though, is um, last year, two and a half thousand children ended up in intensive care through malnutrition in the UK. That really pisses me off. That should never happen um, in our country. I don't care what the economy looks like. So the workshops that we create, all the money that we um, generate from those workshops goes to our local food bank because that pisses me off. So your, your, your purpose can be a direct purpose that's really obvious within your business, or it can be something indirect. But when you get really connected with that, it becomes bigger than you and your challenges, right? It becomes bigger than, um, you know, the fear that you're feeling or the procrastination. It creates an energy and a momentum that helps move things forward. And it also draws people to you. So the nods I got when I talked about, you know, the malnutrition, it draws people to you. People are connected with you on that. They're like, yeah, I, I agree. I don't like that either. So you start to draw people to you when you get absolutely clear on um on your uh purpose um once you've got your purpose in place you need to create a vision so the subconscious works on um visuals and it works on emotions so um and it cannot tell the difference by the way between real life and a movie that you are playing in your head it can't tell the difference so the more creative you can get with um the movie that you play around the vision that you want for your business or what you want to see in the world and if you can get connected with the emotion on that the subconscious believes it is operating in that space remember your little pixie cannot see the real world it's literally just um, absorbing what it is that you're absorbing. So, um, so if you can create those images, that visual, that movie in your head um, of the vision that you want to create, I'm a massive fan of vision boards. They get such a bad rap, um, but I'm a massive fan of um, vision boarding because that's how the subconscious works. We want to interact and manipulate the subconscious with what it likes to see. So get yourself a really good vision and get emotionally attached to it. Set goals. Um, goal setting, again, gets a really b b uh, bad rap, primarily because we've all tried goal setting at some point and we've all screwed it up. Um, uh, uh, what are they called? Uh, New Year's resolutions. Um, I think the average New Year's resolution lasts for 15 days. So by the, about the 15th of January, um, we've, we've buggered them all up. So um, goals, goals get a really bad rap, but goals are fundamentally important on keeping you um, in keeping you on track. So please do set goals. Now, three mistakes people typically make when they're setting goals. Number one, they set crazy, unrealistic goals that they're never going to achieve, right? So dial it back a little bit. Think self-esteem. So if we're continually setting goals that we're not achieving, it does knock your self-esteem. You're better off dialing it back a little bit and setting something that's a bit more realistic that you can achieve. Nothing feels better to me than ticking shit off. I love it. So set, set some nice, realistic goals. Number two um, mistake that people make is they fail to break down the activity on that goal. So what is it that I need to actually do in order to achieve that? That's fundamental. Now, if you have a big goal and you break the activity down and you realize that you can't actually do the activity in the time you've got allotted, then you need to adjust the goal. So, um, so what we do is we work with goals and we work the act with the activity in conjunction so that we're absolutely clear that the activity is the right activity and they all fundamentally um, achieve the goal. So do do that exercise of breaking down. If I set a revenue goal, I can't guarantee I'm going to achieve that revenue goal. There are too many factors involved. Um, like, for example, clients making decisions, right? I can't control that. I can influence it, but I can't control it. But what I can control is the activity that I need to do in order to give myself the best chance of achieve, achieving that, that's what you need to focus on. And that's what you cascade and set your goals on and your tasks are around the activity. Celebrate the activity, right? It's not always about achieving the goal. It's about celebrating the activity. The last thing, um, mistakes that, uh, mistake that people made uh, around uh, goal setting is accountability. You, even if you set an amazing goal, you've broken it all down, you've cascaded it, you've set all the tasks, you're still only 50% likely to achieve that goal statistically. I can share some um, figures with you um, if you're interested in the actual figures, but you're still only 50% likely to achieve that goal. 
if you add in some proper accountability, right? So that's with a group or with somebody that you are properly accountable to, that leaps to 95%. You are 95% likely to achieve your goals with solid accountability. So well worth getting yourself some accountability in place. Okay. Around this agenda, you need to keep coming back to your agenda on a daily basis. Remember, your subconscious operates from repetition. That's how you create change. So daily, daily practices, um, the D word, discipline, um, was not my favorite word. I finally got my shit together on the discipline front, and now it's my freedom. Um, but discipline is where it's at. You have to keep coming back to this um, agenda on a daily basis. Not for you, obviously, because you're a perfectly intelligent adult human being. It's for your little subconscious. So you keep feeding that information back into your little subconscious to get your subconscious on board so that this subconscious is thinking what you need it to think so you can feel what you need to feel. So you take the action you need to take so you get the result. Okay, everyone keeping up and good so far. Cool, cool, good. All right, uh, number three, focus on where the opportunity is in brackets, not where it isn't. So, um, we obviously the landscape has changed right and it has changed there's no point just saying it's all the same because it's not there is no question it's changed and lots of business owners have lost clients they've lost um revenue and in some cases they've really lost hope so i'm seeing lots of business owners not in my club but lots of business owners who are kind of just paused you know they're kind of waiting for stuff they're not motivated at all and part of that is because they're focusing on all the places where the opportunity isn't anymore nothing is going to kill your motivation more than looking at all the places where your um opportunity was but isn't anymore what we need to do is we need to focus on where the opportunity is now george swift my partner brilliant speaker um if you've um if you've never listened to george uh speak it's worth it he's a looks like an unmade bed swears like a sailor but he's a genius when it comes to understanding the human condition so what it is to be a human being now he talks about the teaspoon analogy so if we had a reservoir of opportunity a reservoir and our tiny little bit in that reservoir was a teaspoon even if we lost 30 percent of that entire reservoir our teaspoon's still available right? It's still there. And even if we want to double that teaspoon to, let's say, a tablespoon, it's still there as opportunity. There is way more opportunity out there than you think. Despite what we're being told, there is way more opportunity out there than you think. Um, but it's the activity that is going to get you to that, um, that opportunity. And focusing on where the money is or where the opportunity is, is, what is, is what's going to keep you motivated in the game absolutely crucial. So questions to ask yourself, where is my customer now? So where they were 12 months ago is not where they are today. Everything has changed. Um, there was a statistic, which blew my mind actually, which um, in 2020, between March and October, we experienced five years of evolution on the business landscape in six months. So if you imagine your customer today and where they are in five years time, they're not the same. So, so trust me, they are not the same. You need to really go back and do the work and think about where is your customer right now? What are their challenges today? And how can I help them address those challenges? And it, I urge you to actually go away and do that work because it's really important. Okay, number four. Not everyone's going to like this one. You have got to get your sales head on. Now, as a business owner, a small business owner, there are fundamentally two things you need to focus on, and that is delivery and sales. Delivery, most of you will have nailed. If you can't deliver what you're in business doing, then please stop being in business and go and do something else, right? So let's assume that you can deliver what it is that you're out there um, in business doing um, and you deliver it well, okay? So, um, so delivery will kind of tick. Most of you set your respective businesses up to do what it is that you want to do, whether that was coaching or consulting or marketing um, or HR. That's what you set your business up to do. What you didn't realize was you have inadvertently certainly taken on a sales role and you have got to get your shit together on that, I'm afraid. So I appreciate that may not um, be what you wanted to hear. But when I look at one of the key things that we do consistently um, in BBB, it's we focus on sales. So we run regular sales challenges to help people 
not just focus on sales, but learn to love sales. Now, if that sounds like, you know, well, I might as well learn to love root canal um, to you, then, you know, there's probably a little bit of a gap there on the sales front, right? Not everyone likes sales. My background is sales. So I was a professional salesperson for um, 15 years. Total imposter syndrome, by the way, throughout the entire time. I thought at any point I was going to be found out. But nevertheless, they continue to pay me. Um, and then I've obviously I've been selling in this business for oh, 12 years now. So um, so quite a bit of sales experience. Um, what I see are the businesses who put sales first, not at the expense of customer service or delivery, but just put sales first are the ones that succeed. So you really need to consider tipping your business on its head Almost certainly, if you've got challenges right now with um, bringing money in, with cash flow, it is going to be to do with sales. Now, your ability to sell is very much dependent on your levels of self-esteem. So, um, so do that work on the self-esteem front. That will absolutely help you to have conversations um, with, your, with your clients. Um, the sales landscape has changed. So sales are harder right now. And that's from a professional salesperson, right? Sales are harder. People are a little bit more nervous. They're a little bit more cautious. They're looking for um, more reassurance. They're looking to know that they're not making the, the wrong decision. You know, as more and more business owners come into the market, there are more and more coaches. There are more and more people. There are more and more people, unfortunately, that will take um, your client's money and deliver them bugger all. Um, that's what you're competing against. So it's creating a lot of uncertainty and a lot of unrest. Just as you're uncertain, so are your clients. So your job is to guide your clients through that process to give them the reassurance and the certainty that they need that you are the right person. So I urge you to look at things like case studies, testimonials, really put yourself in their shoes and understand that they are way more scared than they normally would be um, in making commitments. So put yourself in their shoes and think about how you can um, help them along that process. Just know that there is nothing more frustrating than wanting to buy from somebody and them not selling to you. It's, it drives me nuts, right? It's one of my big bugbears. When I say to someone, I'm really interested in your services and they, they don't sell to me. I want to be sold to in that moment. Sales has got, again, a bad rap because, you know, we think a dodgy car salesman that are trying to ram a car on you that you don't really want. You guys are not that, right? You are not selling those services. What you're trying to find are people that you can genuinely help with your services. And once you find them, once you know that you can absolutely help them with the challenges they face, you have a duty to take that client through a solid sales cycle. So if sales is a real challenge for you, I urge you to go out and find yourself some sales training. There are lots of really good sales trainers out there, um, but but make sure that you put sales first and really work on um, plugging the gap in your sales strategy. You should be doing some activity on a daily basis um, to move your business forward from a sales perspective. Don't hide from it. The more, um, again, repetition, right? So if you feel like you're shit at sales today, that's your little subconscious, not you, you're amazing. So the more you go out and and tackle sales, the more you try sales, the more you practice, the more your subconscious is going to get on board and the more, the quicker you're going to become a good salesperson. Absolutely imperative. You don't need to become the greatest salesperson of all time to be successful. You just need to put it first and be a good salesperson. Um, so yeah, a bit of a hot topic for me. So if you've got gaps in that or you need some help on that, um, again, email me. I'm happy to chat through that stuff. That's my bag all day long. Right. Number five. Community, unity, collaboration is key. We have been so separated, isolated. You know, it was hard enough running a bloody small business. You know, it's really lonely running a small business, even when we weren't separated in the way we've been separated. It is way harder now with the degrees of separation that we have. Um, things like uh, Stronger Together, which amazing community, um, BBB, there are communities out there that are there to support you. Get involved in a community. It will transform everything for you. If you find the right community, it will absolutely help you with those three environmental factors. So it will help you get yourself sorted from the inside, even just listening to other people, knowing that you're not the only one that, that is dealing with imposter syndrome. You're not the only one that finds sales really challenging. You're not the only one that doesn't want to pick up the phone to a, you know, a cold call client, right? Even just knowing that 
can start to change how you feel on the inside. But when you see normal people, right? Nobody's special. We're all just normal people trying to do our thing. When you see normal people out there overcoming the challenges that you're over, trying to overcome, it's unbelievably inspiring and it will really help you build confidence um, and your self-esteem so that you can tackle some of these things on the inside. It also helps you get um, support. So when you're dealing with challenges, um, in the remember the outside bit. So this is family. This is um, finances. This is, um, you know, your home situation. When you're dealing with those challenges, you want to find somewhere that can support you somewhere that um, has your back, even when the shit's hitting the fan um, everywhere else. That's what you need to find. And those communities are absolutely out there. When it comes to the um, external bit, what you need is perspective. We can absolutely go down a crazy rabbit hole with what's going on um, in the external world. It is not going to help us grow our businesses if we get caught up in that shit. So what we need to do is get perspective. And the best way to do that is create communities of like-minded people that are there to support you, have your back and help you to navigate what is going on in our external world. Uh, okay. Right. How am I doing for time, Julie? I've lost track a little bit. You're on mute, hum. <laughs> Um, yeah, we are at a uh, quarter to 12, so we okay. just sort of run over by a couple of minutes. Um, tell you what, I'll tell you what I'll do, though. I'll tell you what I'll do. So the eight traits, I've got them mm. in an infographic. So I will send the eight traits out to you so you can see what they are with a little bit of explanation on those. So I'll send those out via Julia. Um, and then um, if, is it OK for me to just quickly mention a workshop? And yeah. then I will. Yeah, because we've got 10 minutes Q&A, Tracy. Yeah okay so, yeah so you, you yeah do do carry on but mention the workshops and and then open it up for questions um oh, exactly and if there are no questions then share the eight traits perfect let's do that okay so i do want to um i do want to mention a workshop we're running so it's on the 22nd of april which is next thursday um julia will share a link for you so you can book it's um it's how to hit 100k so it's really for service-based businesses there's lots of content if you're not a service-based business but it's really for service-based businesses who are deadly serious about growing um, and it's how to the steps that you need to take in order to hit 100k in your business even if you don't want to hit 100k per se it's worth attending because you want to know how to grow in this environment we've absolutely um uh what's the word tailored the content based on the current climate because obviously things have changed so much um we charge 10 pound for the workshop that 10 pound gets match funded and gets given to our local food bank as i mentioned before um so the 10 quid is just to make sure you show up on the day and to raise the money for our local food bank um so please do come and join us for that julia um if you haven't already if you'd share the link that'd be great all right i am i i'll send you the eight traits um but right now i'm totally open to any questions you might have Unless I've fried everyone's brain, which is a possibility. Yeah, B. Thank you, Tracy. <laughs> I've been furiously writing notes and trying to take it in. And, and, I, and I know what you're talking about, and I know you're right. And, and can I apply it to myself? I can help other people with it. But um, uh, sometimes applying it to myself is um, the worst. And I have to say, the uh, sales bit is probably the bit that I find most challenging. And you're absolutely spot on about the self-esteem because sales challenges your self-esteem, doesn't it? It really does. Julie, I love what you've just said, which, um, which, and you're hundred percent right. As a coach, I can give advice left, right and center, but trying to apply it yourself is really hard. It's really hard to kind of come out of yourself <laughs> and, and have a look. So I really respect you for saying that. Um, yeah, sales does challenge your, your self-esteem. Well, I think people have this misnomer that us, us coaches know what the heck we're doing. And actually, we're just as much as like everybody else. We're flailing around in the dark. <laughs> yeah, you're 100% right. <laughs> Thanks, Julie. But yes, um, sales, sales does challenge your self-esteem. Um, but equally... That, that journey of challenging your self-esteem is the one that builds self-esteem as yeah. you start to, to get success. So I love that exercise. I'll, I'm going to take that on board and give that as a go. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Thank Jim. You. Yeah. Hello. Thank you, Tracy. I, I think you'll see when you get a chance to read the chat that everyone's been blown away by your, oh, by your you. thoughts, by your common sense, by your energy. It's been brilliant. And just one question I've got, which is about the community. Yeah. Should the community look like a bunch of other people that do a similar thing to you? Or should the community look like the kind of people you're targeting as clients? Or should they be completely from a completely different world? That's a great question. So um, 
So you need to think about what you want to get from the community. That's the first thing. So um, if you are looking to network to grow the business, that's a specific kind of community that you'll join for networking. And of course, you want as many of your clients in there as possible, or at the very least, a bunch of referral partners that are also talking to your clients. That's the ideal scenario for that. The community that I'm talking about is really more um, about you personally. So it's about how do you... Um, evolve? How do you grow as a business owner in order to become who you need to become to run the business you want to have? Um, and that's a very different environment. So that's not somewhere where you might um, go and sell your um, business because the moment we go into sales mode, the moment we become the person that's um, selling, we're not truly being honest about who we are. So, you know, you wouldn't go up to, um, you know, you wouldn't go into a place where you were selling and say, you know, oh, I'm not really good at this, but, um, but you know, um, you're having a bit of a shit day, but um, but would you like to buy my services? We don't do that. What we do is we put our best face on and we put our, you know, our sales head on and um, and we move forward in that way. So the, the community that I urge you to find is the one that is built on love, number one, and is built on open, honest communication where you can go and say, do you know what? I am having a shit day. I am not my best today. It's a bit crap. I've had a horrible conversation with, um, you know, a potential client or this has happened. It's just not good right now. And um, for it to be okay for you to say that where, where there is no judgment. Equally, um, what you don't want, you want to find the balance. So you don't want a group that, that's just kind of there, there, tea and sympathy. What you also want to balance that is somewhere that gives you a little bit of a kick up the ass when you need it. Um, but you also want somewhere where you can come and celebrate because, you know, there are lots of people out there right now that are really struggling and it makes it very hard if you're having a good time to, to go in and say, do you know what? I am rocking it right now. It's really going well. Makes it really hard. But just as much as we need the support when things are shit, we also really need to be around people that can celebrate with us when um, when things are really good. So um, so that's the community that I urge you to, to, to find. I know that this community is that community. So, you know, this is, I know how, you know, I know how Julie is built. So I know that this, this this um, community is built from that place of, you know, love. You only have to see the people in here and the interactions to know that people are um, willing to be open and honest. But we need more of that. We need more sharing, more collaboration, more honesty, more rawness so that we can all um, move forward and grow. That's fantastic. Thank you. It's about support, really, isn't it? Absolutely. It's yeah. who, who is going to be the supportive group of people. And, and yep. I think we are kind of here now. We're in the right place. But more of it is, is great. Thank you. You're very welcome. Support plus kick up the ass. Very important. Mm. <laughs> I, I was going to suggest relevant support. So I think part of that is active listening and part of that is, yeah, being helpful, giving something. Absolutely. Thanks, Charles. Uh, Emma? Yeah, I was going to say the other thing is don't be afraid to create your own support. I think this is absolutely great. Um, the first thing that, that we did as a business is we have a group of 16 associates is set up during lockdown, a monthly call with all of our associates. And it's the first thing is how is everybody? You know, I think that's and so important. Subject. So, so I think it's about having all those different, and they're all in the same sort of area, but different, you know, all self-employed, you know. Um, so I think it's a matter of having this is fab and this is, you know, a great a great way to to have a lot of different people. But but also, if I think, don't be afraid to create your own, especially if you're a little bit introvert, you know, and it's a bit difficult sometimes to get into spaces. So. Thanks, Emma. Jo, you had your hand up. Yeah, thank you. First of all, great to hear you talk again. It's been too bloody long. So fabulous. Really took loads and loads of notes down. Um, I probably should know the answer to this and you'll probably kick me. <laughs> but um, talk about sales. I mean, I can talk about what I do to the cows come home. So I absolutely love it. But I do get stuck at the sales point. Is there like a formula to follow for sales? Does that make sense? There are about a billion formulas to um, follow for sales. You've got to pick the one that works for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so what's interesting about what you said is you said, I'm okay talking about what I do, but I'm not very good at the sales point. Yeah. The talking about what you do is sales, right? So, so you're in the sales process. So don't, because they're, they're, you're switching your brain. So mm. you're in it. So when you're in that place where you're sharing what you do and you're getting all excited about it, that is sales, right? You're in the process. What you're talking about is that transition from, um, let me tell you how amazing it is to will you buy my services. Yeah. So um, without getting into too much detail, um, the one little, once you've got somebody, right, and you're having the conversations with them, there's a couple of things that you want to find out from them. You want to find out 
what is the impact on them of them buying your services, right? So you've, if you've done your work, you've already found out what their pain is. Otherwise, they wouldn't be talking to you in the first place, right? So you want to find out what their pain is. People will make people will make decisions way more based on um, moving away from pain than they ever will moving towards pleasure. So be aware of that. Yeah. But you want to find out what the pain is of your client. And then what you want to find out is, okay, what is the impact of um, them, them moving forward with you? Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, with what you do, Joe, um, the impact, um, let's say you work with a business owner um, and you're helping them like redo their entire image. Um, the impact of that could be, well, if I, if I feel really good about myself, um, my self-esteem goes up, mm-hmm. which has a direct impact on my ability to sell, which has a direct impact on my bottom line. That yeah. is awesome impact, right? Now, the converse of that is then we also want to find out what's the impact of them not doing it. Yeah. So, and we just need to ask some probing questions, you know, so without saying, well, what's the impact of you doing that? We just ask some probing questions. You know, what would it mean if you move forward with that? What would it mean to the business? And what would that mean? And what would that mean? And what would it mean if you didn't, you know, if you continue mm-hmm. down the path that you're on now? And what would that mean? And what would that mean? And then the switch over, just a really nice little switch over is, are, are we ready to move forward then? So just are we ready to move forward, that, right? You know right. what the process yeah. is. So you know what the process is. They sign something, they do something. Just say, are we ready to move forward then? And then it's a nice gentle close because if they're not ready, you don't want to close too early. Um, it gives them the opportunity to say, yes, okay, I'm ready. But it also gives them the opportunity to say, well, no, at the moment, no, I'm not. Um, and you can say, okay, what's in the way? What, what's stopping you from making a decision? Yeah. And then you're back into the sales process. And you just keep asking, are we ready to move forward now? Yes, great, no. What's in the way? Are we ready to move forward now? It's just Brilliant. a nice, gentle way of getting that deal closed. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Ian? Uh, just a quick thought on uh, on sales. So um, in my experience, one of the key things is to think about your identity. So in my experience, if you are probably most of us on this call, if you go to a dinner party and somebody says, what do you do for a living? I doubt if any of you say, I'm a salesperson. Uh, you might do if you're an American, but it's not culturally the kind of thing that you do in the UK. And I've got a very good friend of mine called Erica Feider. And um, she happens to be an American. Um, if any of you are into music, she sells Steinway pianos. She, at her peak, sold something like 20 times the number of pianos every year that the average Steinway piano seller sold. But if you ask her what she does for a living, she says she's the piano matchmaker. And that's what she does. And she might take over a year to find somebody the perfect piano. But what she does is she creates a visualization, a dream of what it might be like for you to learn how to play a grand piano in your lobby and bring your family and friends um, around to experience what that might be, what that might be like. She would never call herself a salesperson, but that's what she does. Anyway, it's just a thought. I- What I love about that is if you come back to the bit that I mentioned about purpose, she has a purpose, right? Her purpose is to create that match. It's to create, you know, I don't know what sits behind it, create beautiful music. I don't know. But she has a purpose. The moment you said that, I got little goosebumps up my back. If I was going to buy a piano, that's who I want to go to. I want to go to the piano matchmaker. So I love that story. And and, and just by the way, she's one of the, according to Inc.com, one of the 10 best salespeople in the world. So she's got a bit of credibility. So go have a look at her. Um, She's a good model to um, think about. Or yeah, consider. Thanks, Ian. Fabulous. All right. Yeah, I think if I may, Tracy, I'd love to second what what you've said um, and what was just said there about the piano matchmaker. Um, in my experience, so many people talk in their own industry jargon. So um, I was helping a guy, and he does um, IT support. And by the way, he's not on this call. And um, he he talked about how he's got brilliant servers and all this sort of stuff. And I said, well, it's all 100% true, but my eyes have glazed over. I don't know what server is. I don't know what it does. Um, But if you said relentless reliability, ah, I know what that is. I can can get excited, perhaps, if I'm a business owner, that you're offering me relentless reliability yep. um and he said something else he said oh yeah we, we also do da 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 um, and i can't remember what it was but i remember thinking wow 
Oh, I remember what it was. He said, yeah, we, we'll stick a little uh, widget in your computer so we can see what you're doing. I said, well, that's alarm bell territory. I don't want you sticking stuff on my computer. How about we remotely monitor your computer so we can fix it before you even on it, you know it's gone wrong? Oh, yeah, he says, yeah, I, I see where you're coming from. So to me, it is important that people know what we do but we have to explain it, I think, in, in things, in ways that excite them. And I would suggest that's part of a marketing strategy. What's what's your whole stuff? You know, anyway, I think I'll stop there. I'm sure I, I hope I've made my point. You have absolutely made your point. It's about talking to their pain. So uh, you're absolutely right. I don't give a shit what server he's got. What I care about is can he help me with the pain that I'm in? Uh, you know, my computer's blown up or might blow up or I might lose some data. That's what I care about. So you're absolutely right. It's about finding and identifying their pain and talking to the pain. Thanks, Charles. Thank you, everybody. Wow. And um, I'd just like to, Ian has been very... Um, very, very shy there. Ian Mills is actually the author behind the salesperson's secret code. So um, <laughs> do, do reach out to Ian. He is um, an expert in this field. So thank you for sharing that, Ian. But thank you, Tracy. That was absolutely, absolutely brilliant. I've, you know, I see you in chat with you lots, but I've written so many notes. So absolutely brilliant. Thank you. And looking forward to, to um, sending out the eight traits. But now, uh, everybody, we have the opportunity to uh, go into breakout rooms um, to get to know each other a little bit better. And maybe if you need an icebreaker, um, maybe you could share what your purpose is with other people in the room. Because, of course, we never know who um, other people know and other people, um, do the peripheral people that aren't in the room may um, connect with your purpose as well as the people within your breakout room may connect with your purpose. So let's go into breakout rooms. Let's have 10 minutes uh, getting to know each other and then we'll come back and share what we've found um, and um, any learnings that we'd like to share with the group. That would be great. So I'm just going to do that techie thing of opening the rooms and sending you all off to places which is all very bizarre and very sci-fi but there we go and I shall see you on the other side. Welcome back, welcome back. Welcome back Jane, everybody coming back in the room. That was brilliant. Was it? Yeah, really yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. It's nice, isn't it, to, to do that, to get yeah. to know each other better. It's really good. Oh, look, everybody's flowing back in now. The wonders of technology when it works. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. So how did you find that? Was that good? Did you meet some interesting people, people that you didn't know? Yeah. Thumbs up from Mark. Very positive thumbs up there. Brilliant. Excellent. It, we are... Um, inevitably <laughs> as much as i like to be terribly well organized we inevitably are running over a little bit um so i hope you're okay for a, a, a few minutes um but would anybody like to share anything that came up for them in the uh, in the breakout in the breakout rooms has um, everybody gone shy oh, oh Andy. No. <laughs> there, there was just um, a, a sort of another realization i suppose it, it happens quite often in, in the groups and things that I'm I'm part of, this group in particular, that that actually what we're all doing at, at the end of the day is, is somehow um, we, we're offering to remove fear and uncertainty in whatever way we do it, you know, whether it's fear of technology, fear of change, fear of death, um, fear of someone stealing all your money, fear of failing in your business, whatever it is, that's that's what we're all ultimately here to to help people fight back against. Yeah. yeah. And then then you just write your own little script underneath that. But that's the starting point for for basically all of us. Yeah. Yeah. It's so true, isn't it? And we're we're all we are all passionate about what we do and you see that don't you as a, as a trend as a theme for for business owners and you know we all want to make the, the world a better place and um, there's all sorts of nice sort of phrases that spring to mind that have, that have come out of this but you know you are the sum of the five people you surround yourself with um and actually you know the other thing is 
tra- you know, transposing the word sales with 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 Valley helping people. You know, you're there to help people rather than sell to them. You're 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 solving a pain that they have. You're offering them a solution, which is a really nice way of looking at, at things as well. But I'm just I'm just blown away by the energy in this group. Actually, I just think it's phenomenal, and I really really appreciate it. And Tracy, you've brought some really powerful things to the session thank you as 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 I, I knew you would I knew it but lots for us to think about um and lots for us to take away um I will share the eight traits as well we'll do that over email after the session um we are at the end of the sort of official meeting if you like but the doors aren't going to close yet and I can see that Una's got her hand up oh she's just taking it down but <laughs> So, you know, if anybody wants to, to, to stay on the call for another few minutes, then you're very, very welcome to. I'm going to be staying as well. Um, so, so do. Um, thank you, Joe. Um, do stay if you'd like to. But I would just like to thank everybody for joining us today. And I would like to thank Tracy in particular for um, presenting to us and sharing the, the wisdom. Yes. Thank you, Jim. Well done um, with us. Absolutely phenomenal. Um, so that's the end of the official session, but do hang around for chat. And Una, would you like to, did you, did you want to put your hand back up? No? She was clapping. <laughs> She's gone all shy. Have you gone all shy? It was, she was clapping. Oh. <laughs> I was clapping. <laughs> I'd just like to say thank you, Julia. And of course to Tracy. It's been a really good session this morning and I've enjoyed it. And I've enjoyed the people that I've managed to meet. So thank you very much. Very welcome, Charlie. I'm glad you could join us. Amazing, amazing group. Just such lovely energy. It's been a real um, joy. 